Sanji. with my buddy jimmy from hp performance uh, used to be in roswell new mexico did all kinds of crazy turbo stuff we did five liter stuff in fact the it, guys that were asking about the does a really does a five liter like short block really blow up this is the guy that's helped me show that yes indeed you can blow them up but today we're talking about nsx's and specifically a project nsx so jimmy this is now your project nsx but didn't start out that way so let's talk a little bit about the history that came before this and then what happened with this very cool turbo nsx awesome so yeah this car originally started as a buddy of mine uh craig kathy um he so what year this is this car 91 91 okay 91 all the good ones are <laughs> they are right because this wasn't the first one that gave us the bug to get an nsx that was your nsx right winning winning turbo that one and and man your car was phenomenal right whenever we first got it 270 horsepower i think it made like 253 on the dyno when yeah. we first dynoed it yeah. and um when we delivered it to you it was making 450 and we actually had it up as high as 540 and it was an animal it was it yeah. was oh yeah night and day difference you know we were so so much like everything so much better with boost i mean the one complaint yes. i had this car drove around like a, you know, it was like, it started, it was reliable. It was just like a Civic that yep. looked like a Ferrari. But the one thing that was kind of lacking, it was fairly light, but it really did not have enough power. Every time I took it out on the road, everybody wanted to race. And you yes. had Corvettes that had way more power than this and almost everything. Once this thing had boost from you guys over HP Performance, man, it was such a better car. Yeah, it, 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 night and day, right? Whenever we first... Um... We got into it. We were disappointed. We we got on the throttle and we're like, okay, you know, it revs out and you got the VTEC and all stuff. It's really cool. But man, as soon as it would come up on boost, when we put the boost in, it was it was addicting because it handled so well. It was yeah. 2,700 pounds and it had just offered so much more performance in everything. It enhanced the car. Now, it, now it like accelerates like the car looks. <laughs> that's right. Yep. Yep. So that, that's what kicked it off. We dropped your car off and we, we felt that gap. And so we filled it with this car and um, Craig went down to California, found a guy that had rebuilt a rebuilt title in SX. Yep. I mean, they've been hit in the rear and they replaced all that with some uh, parts from a red car, which you can see after all the chips are coming off in the back. All the best ones are red, right? <laughs> That's right. All the best ones are red. And um, man, we got to work right away and we don't have to feel bad about it because it's a salvage car, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so for all you all you numbers matching NSX guys out there, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's exactly it. Yeah, um, OG photos. Look at this thing, man. This I is know. Awesome. Look at this, man. This this is pulled from the web. There's actually way back machine. Anybody wants to go there and look up a website from 20 years ago? This oh, is the ticket. Cool. Yeah. So check it out. This car with just the turbo kit, a clutch, injectors, a uh, fuel pump, and AEM. Uh, that's what we use for tuning it. Went 10:39 okay. at 1:38. And um, 16 pounds of boost. And, and nice. that, that was cool. a record. Back back in the day? Back in the day. 16 years ago, that was a record. It held it for a few years. Now, obviously, there's a guy that's going a lot faster now. Um, but that was that was the record at the time. And what kind of fuel did you run on that? Um, so we were running C16 whenever we ran okay. on this. Um, now, we did have a pump gas tune-up, and it was a lot less than 16 pounds. We only ran it on like 10 or 11 pounds of pump gas. Yeah, but I want I want guys that are looking at this um, photo from the Wayback Machine to check this thing out. Take a look at the daylight between that inner fender well, yeah, and that front tire, and then look how squatted the back end is. Like, man, this yeah. thing's launching pretty good. Yeah, it, it did. It did really well. Um, I have a quick clip. Let's watch the clip, and then we'll go yeah. over the data from it. Right at home on the drag strip. Is that where they all belong? <laughs> yeah, that's where every other thing should be, right? That guy was so into it, he did a really good job. Hey, you gotta love enthusiasm as a cameraman. Yeah. Things motoring out there pretty good. And it looked yeah. like it launched pretty hard, too. It did. Oh, this will tell us right here. Yeah, yeah. So 155, 60 foot. So basically, it was all stock suspension with just um, a bias ply tire, Mickey Thompson. Uh, 16 inch wheel or the factory wheels and so is a 26 950 or something like that i don't even know if they make that tire anymore but okay. it worked perfectly for us 
went 1039 at 138. Now it had been as fast as 141, but it, it was in the realm, and that was the record pass right there. Okay. Nice. That, that's the uh, that's getting that's going pretty good, man. Especially yeah. that this this was a stock motor, right? Yeah. Other than stock. the turbo stuff. All stock, yeah, just clutch and fuel system and turbo. That was it. And what and size turbo did you use on this thing? 67. Uh, we ran that with a 67. Okay. Was it a was it a whole set turbo or was it Garrett? Uh, it was a Garrett. Okay. That was it was before they did billet wheel stuff and all of that. Uh, yeah. But it was still uh, it was a hybrid turbo. I think at that time we didn't have a T4 in there. It was a T3, T4 hybrid turbo. So, oh wow, like a stage five wheel on the back with a 67. Now we we've, we've done plenty of other good things with much larger, much larger and much better turbos, but it did good for the time. So was this an old T67 or GT67, the thing that they would have called it back in the game, back in yeah, the day, like yeah, like a turbonetics version or those guys? Yeah, that, that's that's basically it. Did this have an air to water intercooler on it? <laughs> Air to water intercooler. Um, that's what we we ship the kits with. It, it just for fitment and where everything's at. We used yeah. a um, actually uh, uh, air to water, actually a transmission um, a cooler with a yeah. fan on it, and that's okay. what it came with in the kit. And it came, it was off of a switch, and so they could turn it on or when, off. When when you guys ran this, you didn't run it on ice water, right? It was just just ambient water. No, we were we were icing it. We have a tank. You were icing. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Tank in the back. So let's take a look at this is a this is a dyno run, right? Yeah. So max of 15.7 pounds of boost, 605 okay. horsepower, 436 torque. Um, notice this boost curve though. Um, we intentionally left the boost a little bit lower under peak torque and then had a rising boost curve towards the end. Uh, now we did that one for longevity, we wanted the motor to last, and then two. Uh, we were taking advantage of the gear multiplication and keeping it in third gear and running it out. We tried shifting to fourth, but every time we did that, we would lose time. And so we were okay. running this out to 85 or 8,600 RPM. And um, it needed the extra boost to keep up with the power. And Yeah, so the power. rising boost curve helped carry, helped carry the power out there? Yep, that's it. And did you do this with the boost controller on the AEM? Is that how you were able to tailor yeah. the boost curve? Okay. Yep, we used a, a three-port uh, boost controller off of the AEM and so up. I want to point out to everybody looking at this dyno curve, which we do a lot of, obviously, on the channel. But if you take a look at that, that's a nice flat, flat torque curve. That's yeah. typical VTEC stuff. It goes up and just carries it all the way across. You get a nice rising power curve. That stuff's impressive. I know. It was over 400. I mean, as soon as it came up on boost and the wastegate opened, it was over 400 pounds foot of torque. And it carried it out all the way through the run. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's so much better. From the factory, it probably was around 200, right? Yeah, I, I think, um, geez, I can't even remember what it was, but yeah, it was right at 200. Yeah. Dude, that's super cool. Yeah, this car was fun. It was it was a lot of fun to drive this car. Um, so what happened with this car? You guys are, I know uh, Craig owned it and you guys are drag racing it, but yeah. um, what happened? Okay, so long story short, we ended up uh, hurting a head gasket. Whenever we went to uh, change the head gasket out, it kind of set in the, the corner of the shop. So why, like it does. why did you guys hurt the head gasket? <laughs> oh my gosh. So there was a show that was coming into town and I, I can't even remember the name of it. Um, it wasn't Pink's, was it? It wasn't Pink's. They would guess the time that the cars were going to run. Okay. Um, it was on Discovery Channel. And okay. so they would have a, a panel of guests and these guests would come up and say, oh, I, I remember that. Yeah. And so we were yep. going to go on that show and we're like, okay, well, we're going to run a nine on this show. So put it on that, strapped it down to the dyno the night before. And uh, got up to about 700 and started pushing water. <laughs> Put the nine second tune on it in the boost yep. level. And then all of a sudden the head gasket said, no, I'm more of a 10 second head gasket. That's right. Yeah, that's exactly what it said. I, I like 610s, not 700s. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's not do that. Okay. So you got a, you got a motor, you got a bad head gasket. Then what happens? Um, so it sits in the, actually in the, in the, the back of the garage, collecting dust and cobwebs. Um, we finally got it back together, but we never gave it the attention that it needed to run a nine or the ultimate goal, right? To, yeah, to really typical project car. Yeah, typical project car. We moved on. We had a lot of other stuff going. Um, and Craig uh, basically was daily or driving it almost every day. Um, now, nice. in the meantime, I move across the country. Craig doesn't have my support anymore. And so what he did is uh, parked it in a barn and it just sat there. <laughs> 
he got married. That's where kid. you get all these barn finds. <laughs> That's where you get these barn finds. That's what this is. It's a barn find. Yeah, and, nice. Um, yeah, super sad. And but I, I kept on Craig every year. I hey, what's going on with the NSX? What when when are you going to let it go? If you let it go, I need to be. I need to get the first call. So he what? has it is just he has it is just sitting over there, and you you're yeah. hounding him to try to buy this thing, right? That's right. And six years ago, he finally gave in, and there was a lot of pressure. You know, I called him and. And I was like, look, it's just sitting there. You're not going to do anything with it. And he's like, you got to wear him down, right? <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, I, I wore him down. He finally was like, okay, come get it. And I wasted no time. It had just, I mean, snowed a ton in New Mexico. So I flew into El Paso, got a rental, drove down to Craig's, and nothing was going to deter me because I was afraid he was going to change his mind. Okay. So you were on it. You're like, okay, he said yeah. yes. That's all that I heard. I'm on my way and we're going to make this happen. Yeah. Within two days, I was there. Nice. And firing. So up you didn't, car. you didn't go down there with a trailer or anything. You just flew out there, rented a car and drove over yeah. there. Right. That's it. Yep. Flew down. And, and, and the intention was I'm driving back with the car. Right. It's a Honda. And how far of a drive is that? Uh, so from Roswell, it's 22 hours. Oh, <laughs> Quick yeah. little trip, no problem. It's it's, it's only the best way. It, it, it's safe, and you know, whenever you grab a car out of the barn, of course, it's going to. What drive all the what way. could possibly happen? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. So I thought. So, I, so I mean, here the car's running, right? The car's running. Fired it up, and and you can see it's got low oil pressure, but it's got it's always had low oil pressure. It had about yeah. fifteen pounds of oil pressure. Yep. Yeah. Um, but it also had like this light knock in it when we first fired it up, and I dismissed it. <laughs> all yeah it was it was it was a light knock and um i just missed it because i was so excited to own the car i mean i would oh, have yeah. sat in the car and just made noises but so after sitting so long you just went over there you guys fired it up and you're like dude i'm totally ready for a road trip now <laughs> totally ready and an hour later um bad things oh so this this happened on the road while you're driving back right yeah on the road on the way back uh... i mean Look and since you had here. a 22 hour drive this wasn't you out like missing shifts at night 12,000 rpm no. or anything. this is just driving home right i mean there's ice all over the road i, I haven't even made a pound of boost i'm literally yeah. creeping oh, along yeah, yeah we saw the snow that's not ideal for a turbo yeah. sx weather <laughs> yep but yeah you can see it it, it wanted uh, some ventilation and it got it two holes oh. side of the block and so the uh, light knock turned into something else right yeah knock knock Here's the titanium <laughs> rod. That's, that's Uncle Titanium Rodney. <laughs> that's right. Oh, oh wow. Devastating. I, I was crushed. Um, and this happened. I, I had it towed to Lubbock and then hired a transport from Lubbock to Georgia. And oh wow. So you had a broken motor and a really expensive tow bill. Yeah, and an expensive titanium rod just hanging out, right? <sighs> um, and that's the other thing with these motors, super rare, you know, C30. Oh yeah, yeah. They're they're hard to you find. You just go to the wrecking yard and find those, right? Yeah, yeah. They're they're plentiful. I think they're like five or six hundred bucks. Okay, so your plan was go there, pick the car up, yeah, <laughs> throw some race fuel in it, do some tuning, go out and knock off a nine, just you know, like you would. Exactly. And then on the way back, this happened. So now, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, there, in sixteen years, right from the time we ran that pass until now, we're we're, we're using E eighty five now. Throw in some big injectors, fuel pump, better turbo, and run it oh, yeah. That that was the thought. That was the whole game plan behind it. I was like, man, I'll I'll be in the nines in a month and a half. It sounds like a win. As soon as the track opens. Yeah, but that didn't happen. So I had to find another motor. I called all around. I called Science of Speed. I called or I, um, I checked all the forums. And and yeah. ultimately I just had to find a motor. And I did. I found a motor within 10 days. And so oh, another see, another C series NSX? Yeah, another C30 NSX. Okay. Five thousand dollars, mind oh. you. Ouch. And look, it's sitting here nicely on a crate on the loading yeah. dock. Started pulling it apart. This is the picture of when I first started pulling it apart. Okay. And um as soon as I dug it. So you piece, you were just trying to check it, make sure it was okay before you even put it in, right? It hasn't even run or anything, right? No, it hasn't run. And I was gonna okay. do the super richie rebuild. Yeah, the razor blade rebuild for the win. Yep, that's it. Uh this is not good. No. They had, had spun a bearing. Now, they didn't let it go as far as I had. Um, I mean, they 
they didn't push it. So, but there's a there's a lot of temperature in that rod, though. Yeah, absolutely. It it, it was it was terrible, um, honestly. Uh, now I did I measured the um, dimensions on this rod, and it was round still, and it was within like a few ten thousandths of uh, factory oh, spec. spec. But <laughs> yeah, but how do you get past a rod that had that kind of temperature in it that's changed that kind of color? How do you put that in and go, you know, I think that's going to be totally fine, right? It's going to be awesome, right? Yeah, and especially whenever you consider I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to run a 999 and then it's just going to put around. It's, yeah. it's going to go a 980 and a 70 and a 60 and it's just, it's going to have a lot thrown at it. So I had to start thinking. Yeah, long, just like with the boost, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to run right. 600, eh, 650, maybe 700. And that's how the stuff goes. So yeah, a little, you know, preparation beforehand, probably a good idea. That's right. Uh, yeah, and, and, and you're right. Absolutely right. When you have a turbo, it, it's too easy, right? You just turn the boost yeah. up and you're ready to go faster. Oh, yeah. And, more power. And, and because it was working so well at 600, it's got to work well at every other number above that, right? That's right. It's only going to get better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's recap. You went to go get the project car. You got the project car. It broke on the way home. Yep. You said, okay, now that motor's broke. I got to buy another one. I buy another really expensive NSX motor. And now that one's broke. So now where are we? So the, the thought process is because I know I'm going to continually beat on this car. I need to find something that I can I can buy with at a reasonable price. And I'm not going to spend yep. so much. And that has some kind of aftermarket support. So the two options now, K series wasn't popular in the NSX, but there were some MR2s around with it at the time. Yeah. And then there was a guy online that was uh, actually installing a J series motor in his NSX. Okay. So I was tossing yeah, both, both good choices. Around. Yeah. yeah. I, I already had a K sitting in the garage at, with a CSS block and all kinds of good stuff. And but yeah, I I really had to. Uh, Put a list together and decide which way do we want to go That's all at. right so this is part one of project nsx <laughs> the tales of woe so far unfortunately but don't worry it does get better so right now he's got uh, an nsx that needs a motor and is in the decision making process to figure out what's going to go in there. And it sounds like you're kind of leaning toward no more c30 that's really expensive and looking yeah. instead at maybe some kind of swap into the nsx that's it all right, so you guys have to wait for part two to find out what happened and what the next thought process is, but that's coming up right away. I'm Richard Older. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Big thanks to Jimmy, originally from HP Performance, but now not so much anymore, but this is his project NSX, and we're going to cover all kinds of stuff. we got drag racing coming up, all kinds of cool stuff, but you'll have to wait for part two.